The new optimized Dreamcast Core is now available to the public, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to load it onto your PlayStation Classic. It's Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, so before we get started, just want to touch base about a couple things. The first thing, I might sound a little bit strange, I've got a little bit of a stuffy nose, uh, I'm just coming down off of a cold, so I apologize in advance, but I'm doing the best I can over here. The second thing that I want to mention is aside from installing the, uh, the Dreamcast core that we're going to do, we also have to put on the BIOS files for the Dreamcast. Without the BIOS files, the uh, the games won't run properly, so we need to make sure that we install those, and I will show you guys where to do that. Now, I will make a note, I cannot show you where to download the BIOS files for legal reasons, but what you can do is I will leave the, uh, the names of the BIOS file in the description, and if you just do a quick Google search, you guys should have no trouble finding those at all online, so... What we're going to need to do to get started is we're going to have to download the new updated core. So we're going to go ahead and go to our Mod My Classic web page. And as always, I will leave the link in the description down below. We're going to scroll down and we're just going to download the PlayStation Classic Ricast core. I'm going to save that right to my desktop. And we're going to go ahead and minimize our web browser because we no longer need it. So what you're going to notice here is right away the Rycast core isn't zipped. It's the, the proper core file. It's an SO file. We're ready to go ahead and load this right into our USB drive. So the next thing that we need to do is make sure that our USB drive is plugged into our computer. Another thing that I want to note is if you are using AutoBleam, this will work. Uh, as well as Bleem Sync. So it doesn't really matter which version of the hack you are using, uh, this will work for both methods. So what we need to do is we're going to open up our USB drive, and I've got that right over here, and we are going to go into our Bleem Sync folder. Now, if you've got your uh, auto bleam folder, you're just going to go straight into your retro arc folder. But uh, because I'm using my Bleem Sync build, I have to double click on Bleem Sync, OPT, and then I go into my retro arc. Again, if you are using auto bleam, your retro arc folder should be right on the root of your USB drive. So we're going to go into retro arc and then we're going to go into dot config, retro arc again, and then we're going to go into the cores. And then all we have to do is grab our Rycast core that we just downloaded, copy it, and place it into our uh, course folder. Now it's going to ask if we want to replace the existing file. Uh, we're gonna say yes. So the cores that were previously on our PlayStation Classic is the old Rycast core. We do want to replace that with the new one. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the file in the destination and that is done. So now the new Rycast core is loaded up. We are good that way. What we need to do now is we need to put in those BIOS files. So what we need to do is we actually need to create a folder in our systems folder and we need to load those BIOS folders or files into there. So I'm going to do this right from the root of the drive just so you guys can see. So we're going to go back to the root of the drive. We're going to double click on Bleem Sync, OPT, and then RetroArch. If you are using AutoBleam, you are just going to go to the root of your drive and double click on RetroArch, and then we'll be in the same area. Next, we have to double click on the Systems folder, and in here you're going to see that it's got a bunch of cores for other folders, or sorry, for other emulators. What we need to do is we need to create a new folder, and we have to label it DC for Dreamcast. It must be labeled DC, and it must be in lowercase. So we're going to open that up. And as you guys can see here, I've got my two BIOS files here. I've got a dreamcast underscore BIOS dot bin, and I've got a dreamcast underscore flash dot bin. I need both of those files. And as I said, I cannot explain to you or I cannot show you or link to you where you can download those files. But what I will do is I will leave the name of them in the description below. And you guys shouldn't have too much trouble if you just plug them into Google. You should find some uh, some sources on where you can where you can access those BIOS files. So now that we've gone ahead and we've loaded our BIOS files into our newly created DC folder within our systems folder, we're good to go. The uh, the last step that we need to do before we pop our USB drive into our PlayStation Classic is going to be loading up games. Um, you wherever you've got your games loaded up is fine. I've got mine on a folder. 
uh, right in the root of the drive called RetroArch Games. And then if I double click on Dreamcast, I've got a bunch of games in there. Now I do want to make note that I believe there's only certain uh, certain file formats that this uh, system can read. Currently, I know it's running CDI and it, I believe it runs GDI as well. I think my Crazy Taxi is a GDI format, yes. So those are the two that I know work. I was trying to get BinQ to work, but I wasn't having very much luck. So um, currently I'm gonna say I know for a fact CDI works and GDI works. And for the most part, 90% of the, the ROMs that you guys can find nowadays are either gonna be CDI or GDI anyways, so you should be good. Um, but other than that, after the games are loaded up, you're good to go. Now we just need to pop our USB drive into our PlayStation Classic. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my USB drive and we're gonna go ahead and make that switch over right now. All right, guys, so here we are. We're just gonna go ahead and open up our RetroArch app. Perfect. And I do wanna make note that uh, for what we're doing right now, I'm currently using a PS4 controller that is hardwired into my PlayStation Classic through a USB 2.0 hub. Uh, I find that the PS4 controller is really nice to use when you're dealing with Dreamcast or PlayStation or any of those other games uh, that you may want to play that require analog. Uh, from what I'm understanding, in the next version of Bleem Sync that is supposed to be released, we may or may not get support for Xbox controllers, which will be really nice. Uh, my personal favorite controller that's ever been made is the Xbox One controller, even though I prefer Sony over Microsoft. So uh, I, I do have to give credit to Microsoft. Microsoft for creating that controller. It's probably the most comfortable controller I've ever held. Uh, so I am looking forward to possibly using that with my PlayStation Classic. But aside from that, let's go ahead and take a peek at the cores. We're gonna go ahead and load cores and we're gonna scroll down to Sega. And we should have our Dreamcast right here. So you can see right in here, Sega dash Dreamcast slash Naomi and then in Rycast. Um, we're gonna go ahead and select that core. Okay, so now that the core is loaded, we're gonna go ahead and try to load some content. So I've had some requests for some certain games that people want to see. Uh, they wanna see a couple 3D fighters. Now, I haven't tested any of these games yet, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and load some games and see how they run and see if we can get some games to work properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, load up one of the games. Let's go to our Dreamcast folder. And the first one I've been asked to load up is Dead or Alive. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that up right now. So right away we can notice that while we're playing this game, there's definitely some frame rate drops. Uh, it's kind of laggy. And the audio certainly sounds uh, sounds pretty rough, but uh, yeah. So we can still see that clearly emulation isn't perfect on it. Now, if you were to run this as a side-by-side -side comparison with the, uh, the Dreamcast emulator that was on the stock, um, as a stock core, there, there's a substantial difference between how this is running and how uh, the the older version was running. Now that being said, I haven't done any optimization at all in terms of the settings within the uh, within the core itself. Uh, and as you guys can see, I'm running this on rather on a relatively low resolution as well. So um, the fact that that's on a low resolution should help with playability. Um, that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly pause the game. And I'm going to see if I can adjust the resolution and see uh, see if that makes much of a difference. Okay, so what I can see here right away is that uh, the resolution looks much better, but you can see we've got some crazy glitching going on on the side, and uh, the audio is not any better. The movements are still really slow, really laggy. Um, but that might just be this game. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna exit this game and we're gonna try a different game. All right, guys, so we are currently uh, running Grandio 2. And it seems all right, the, the beginning, I've never played this game before and it is painful to sit and watch through the opening credits. Uh, there's absolutely no way to, uh, to skip them, so. It was, uh, it was definitely, it definitely wasn't nice. It was stuttering, the audio was brutal. The, uh, the frame rate wasn't very nice for that. But now that we've actually gotten into the actual gameplay, it seems to be staying somewhere between 25 uh, to 29 to 30 frames per second. Um, 
and so far it seems to be seems to be running all right. The audio is a little bit on the on the on the bad side, but it's it's not terrible. So. All right, guys. So now we are finally playing. This game has a ridiculous length of time before you can actually start moving your character around. And we're currently sitting at about uh, 30 frames per second. So this looks like it is running really well. Uh, with the way that it's running, you may even want to consider boosting the resolution so you get some better picture quality. But uh, as I said, I'm not really going to be messing around with that too much. I'm just going to kind of showcase a couple games here and there. So. All right, so let's take a look at some combat here. So our frames drop a little bit. We're down to about 22, 23 frames per second. And it just kind of bounces back. But yeah, no, it certainly is playable. So definitely uh, Grandia 2, if that's a game you like, this is one that you can definitely play. So let's go ahead and switch over to another game now. All right, guys, so I've got uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica loaded up right now. Now, I've never played this game either, so I'm trying to figure out what the buttons are. Go on. Get out of here. This place is finished. So we're going to go ahead and skip the cutscene. We're going to get right into the gameplay here. This definitely feels like it's playable, so if you are uh, wanting to get some Resident Evil on, looks like this one is doable too. Alright, so let's go ahead and switch over and try another game now. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and try Sega GT, see if we can get ourselves a race going and see how well that works. So let's go ahead and just do a time attack. I guess we're going to do a single race. We're just going to go on the easy class. And we're just going to pick our car. Let's just go ahead with this car here. We'll rock it in red. We'll just pick this track here. And we're just gonna jump into it. So just getting started, it looks like frame rates are pretty good. The controlling is nice and smooth. It actually feels like it's playing really well. Now what I do notice in some racing games is once you pick up a certain amount of speed, because of all the graphical changes that happen on screen, it can definitely start to lag. But um, surprisingly, this hasn't really had that. So this is definitely a playable game. This is called Sega GT. Yeah, this is a game for sure that if you needed to up the resolution just to kind of uh, increase the visibility and to make your game look better, definitely, definitely it should be able to handle it on this game here. Now 
There we go. All right, let's try another game. All right, guys, so I figured I'd finish off with a familiar one. We've got Sonic Adventure 2. Definitely have some audio issues on this. Frame rate's low. I mean, it's certainly playable if you want to mute the game. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate all the support. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do that. And uh, I'll talk to you guys again real soon.